There are many AI tools you can use to up your genealogy game, but one of them stands above the rest. I'm going to show you how to use it and tell you why you need to be doing it today. So what is this tool? It is FamilySearch.org's full text search. It's a mouthful. This tool uses Microsoft AI to index records using OCR, which is optical character recognition or a fancy way of saying computers reading old handwriting. Now, Family Search has over 20 billion records on their site, and they have microfilmed and now digitized all those records. But the hard part is indexing, because if they're not indexed, you have to look through them all <laughs> to try to find your ancestor. And that can be rather daunting. I'm Michelle Spencer, owner of Roma Mary Grace Historical Research, and I've been using this tool for almost a year. I found hundreds of records I didn't even know existed, and they are part of my family story today. Do you have a brick wall or an ancestor that just can't be found? This tool might provide the answer, so let's jump right in. Okay, so to get started, we will not start on the Family Search homepage. Because this tool is still an experiment, it tends to be a little hard to find. So the easiest option is to put that web address into your browser or Google FamilySearch.org's full text search. It's easy to find, you click on it and you get right in. However, to use this tool or to use any of the Family Search website, you do have to have a free account. So if you don't already have one, go to the home page and create that free account. And when you're signed in, it will open back up to this page. Notice that you have options uh, for your search, several different categories. It also gives you some ideas down here for advanced search tips. So I do suggest that you take a look at these. My number one tip for you is that when you search, you only use the keyword search function. It is, I've, I've found that it's much better than using the other, uh, either name or place or date. In fact, I think you should leave all of those things empty. Use only keyword search, even if you're researching your ancestor's name. And I'll show you how to filter those results in just a moment. So I'm going to put my ancestor's name, which is Reifeisen, in the keyword search, and I get 259 results. If I put his name in the name category, I get 115. So I do get additional ones. And part of that is just as the computer eye is reading through these documents, especially the ones that are handwritten, um, sometimes they'll miss it if you have it in the name category. So I, I highly suggest keyword, whether you're using a place or a name, definitely do not put place here. It really messes it up. It's too much for it to think about. So. 259 results. The first thing I want to show you here is the fact view. This allows you to see the dates and the places. If you toggle that key off, you get more of the actual text of the document. So if you're looking, you know what you're looking for, you're looking for a specific document and you can recognize it more easily by the text, you may want to see it in this view, but most of the time I leave that on so I can see the places and the years. Remember, this is a computer eye reading this, so accuracy is a little fuzzy. And you can see that when you read some of the names. Sometimes you'll see um, various options here because it's looking at that handwriting, right? Now, we didn't use any filters. We just used that keyword. Here's the opportunity to use these filters. Just keep in mind, it makes a difference which of these you choose to use first. So for example, if I know I want a court record, as we're seeing right here, I could go to record type, I could go to legal records, and I could go to court records. So these, you're gonna wanna keep going down until you have no other choices. Now, you can choose between these or just leave all of those and hit apply. And now I'm only looking at court records. But if I wanted to have a broader view, I might wanna see what collections are included. Understand these records have been kept in 
the the record sets as as they were originally microfilmed and then digitized. What what that means is they're named differently. Most of the time it is a place, so you will see either the country name or a state. However, you do want to pay attention because there are some great um, record sets being added and as they continue to add more, how it's named may look a little different. Here's a great example, the United States employment records. Um, and obviously I don't know exactly what that looks like until I click on it. Now, right now you can only choose one record set at a time. So keep that in mind. Um, I'm going to go right here to Missouri and I'm gonna go legal. But if you look at that, there are several record sets for Missouri um, that weren't here before. So they are adding record sets every day, which is pretty fabulous. I'm gonna look at legal. I'm gonna hit apply. That takes it down to nine. Again, this is um, different types of tax, uh, court records, etc. So that gives you an opportunity to see. You can also click on the year. It starts with the uh, century, but then if you click on that, you will get the decade. So you can narrow it down even further. Place also uh, narrows down very efficiently you can go from the country to the state to the county. Now, when I do this and hit apply, well, I only found one. Next, you wanna try the alternate spellings or misspellings of your ancestor's name. While this gives you more limited results, sometimes that's not the case, so it is worth your while. Now. You can use the wildcard versions as explained in the search tips below, but I'm gonna be honest and tell you I haven't had much luck using those. So for now, I highly recommend using your own list of misspellings. You should expect changes to this tool as it is improved and re record sets are added. Full text search was unveiled at last year's Roots Tech Conference and the 2025 event is only a few weeks away. That means this tool may look different very soon, so try it out today and see what story you can add to your family tree. If you find this video helpful, hit subscribe. I will be posting more about this tool and others I use to research right here on the Roma Mary Grace channel. Thanks for watching.